Hi, as part of the AQA astrophysics module, you're going to be expected to learn how to draw a few different ray diagrams for different types of telescopes and for how different lenses uh, Hi, as part of the AQA astrophysics module, you're going to be expected to learn how to draw a few different ray diagrams for different types of telescopes and for how lenses make different types of images. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw the arrangement for a Cassegrain telescope. A Cassegrain telescope is made out of a parabolic concave mirror and produces an image behind the mirror. To do this, you only need to make sure you bring into your exam with you at least one, but preferably two sharp pencils, a proper length ruler, and of course a rubber in case you make any mistakes. In fact, the rubber is going to be very useful for this particular diagram. As with any ray diagram, the first thing we're going to draw is our principal axis. Make sure you give yourself uh, plenty of space within the uh, area provided for you for your question. Draw a line across that space and this will be your principal axis. One of the things the examiner is going to be looking for when you draw this diagram is that your curve is a smooth curve. You're not going to be expected to be able to draw a perfect parabola or even a perfect arc, but if you draw two curves here which clearly aren't connected, you're not going to be able to get full credit for this particular question. I like to draw a full curve in one motion as far as possible. And then rub out a small amount. In fact, I'm not very happy with that curve at all. So I'll rub out the whole thing and start again. Don't worry about taking a couple of goes with this. It's worth making sure that the curve looks good at the beginning, otherwise the whole diagram can get a bit thrown uh, can get thrown out quite easily. There we go. I'm happy with that now. Third time lucky. It's worth practicing this. Of course, this being a Cassegrain arrangement, I need to uh, provide a little space there for the light to emerge. So I'm just going to rub a little bit out there. And I'm also going to redraw my principal axis moving through the center. The question will usually state that it only expects you to draw two axial rays. So we can draw two rays coming parallel to this axis and hitting the mirror. But we also need to clearly show this is a mirror. Examiners want to see that you know what you're drawing. So I'm just going to hatch the back of this to show this is the non-reflecting side of the mirror. As there are two mirrors to draw for this particular diagram, it's worth doing this on both of them. So I've got a concave mirror here. This is my parabolic collecting dish. But this mirror is going to be reflecting the rays that it collects onto a smaller secondary mirror up here. This is going to be a convex mirror. So I'm going to draw that up here. And again, I'm going to hatch the non-reflective side so the examiner can clearly see what it is. I'm now ready to draw my rays. So I'm going to draw two parallel rays. First one here and again I'm going to put an arrow on that to show its direction and another one over here still parallel to that principal axis. These two rays are going to reflect off this mirror onto this secondary mirror Because they've changed direction, I'm going to put another arrow on them. Because this is only an approximate diagram, there's no need to draw normal lines here to, or to make sure that the angle of instance is in, equal to the angle of reflection. We just draw to show how the light rays would be used to make an image. It's important also to make sure that these light rays haven't crossed yet because they don't cross until they reach this sort of area. 
So they're going to get to this secondary mirror, they're going to reflect again, and they're going to pass through this aperture at the back of the telescope. I'm going to make sure they cross round about here, so I'm just going to get my ruler in the right place, and have them crossing over there, and then This is another use for our principal axis because we can make sure that our rays, when they do cross, they cross exactly on our principal axis. This is what we would find in a proper Cassegrain arrangement. The final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the eyepiece lens. And I'm going to make sure that the rays reach it. There we go. Just going to do my final checks before I move on. I'm happy that this mirror looks like a good curve. It looks like it's all one continuous curve because I drew it like that. I've made sure my rays don't cross until they've passed through the aperture and they cross exactly at the aperture along the parallel axis. I've drawn it as far as the eyepiece lens, which I have drawn. There's no need to label it. I've made sure I've hatched the back of the mirror so that the examiner can clearly see what side is the non-reflective side. I've made sure my secondary mirror is clearly a convex mirror and I've got my two parallel rays. I would be happy with that. Three marks. Thank you. Have a look at some of my other videos to see some of the other ray diagrams you might be expected to do this in this module. It's worth practicing all of them because you're guaranteed to be asked at least one of them in your exam.